Friends, welcome to the Daily Inch. <laughs> oh, hello. While I'm away researching Murder Mile, here's a little treat to keep you entertained over the next three weeks. Fifteen little stories which are fun, rambly, informative, but not essential to listen to. Each story's been written and presented in a tongue-in-cheek way, and are not for the easily offended. Murder Mile returns on Thursday, the third of November, twenty twenty-two. But until then, there's this. Number six, mice cleared of manslaughter. Mice are bastards, utter bastards, rancid little lice-infested shits. With oversized, unblinking eyes, like they're constantly mashed off their faces on meth, nasty, snuffling noses, like they've been tooting more blow than a stockbroker on payday, and ugly, jutting, bucked teeth, like a redneck grinning. It's for the first time since the dawn of time. He's extended his gene pool by not banging a blood relative. Forget about the cute animated crap the Disney churns out. Mice are little more than flea-covered, inbred, sex-obsessed drug addicts, who break into your home, scoff your cheese, whittle everywhere, and leave little brown messages on the floor, like they've written what they think about you in Morse code. All they do is eat and shag, like a contestant on Love Island, only with less food, less brains, and less STDs. And they don't give a hoot what they eat. Whether food, clothes, or electrical wiring. Of course, the only thing that they don't eat are those evil little blue squares of poison that we bafflingly leave out to kill them, as if they're likely to walk past them on the way to the kitchen and think, "Hmm, what shall I eat? A wheel of camembert, a nice roast leg of lamb, a tray of smoked salmon, or, oh, what's that?" That looks like a block of rat poison, which stinks like the foulest chemicals known to man, which burns our lips when we touch it, and it tastes as caustic as those nasty blue slush puppies, which turn even the most passive of kids into nasty little bastards. But mice are evil little things which will eat anything. I once lived in an old people's home. True fact. I was a property guardian keeping watch over a semi-derelict care home in Harlston, a place so grim and forgotten that even though the building had a leaking roof, a cockroach infestation, and was riddled with mice, during this period the council granted it a five-star food hygiene rating. It was so bad that on one night, as I was about to open my kitchen cupboard, my flatmate asked, "Is that your couscous in there?" I wouldn't eat it. I've just seen three mice playing in it. And true enough, the little gits had nibbled through the bag and shat everywhere, like they've written "balls to baldy" in turds. Thankfully, a few weeks later, all the mice had died. Ah, not because we'd poisoned them, or because the council had done their job by keeping a council property rodent-free, but because a giant rat. So big he bowed the tiles when he ran across the ceiling. Had eaten the lot of them. We called him Gary. But that's the problem. Mice will nibble on anything. Most of the time it's just food, but sometimes the things they eat can lead to tragic consequences. Fifty-five-year-old Linda Watts lived alone in a ground-floor flat on Hoan Road in Tooting. She had become more reclusive, suffering with bipolar disorder, epilepsy, and she was a chronic smoker and drinker. A few years before her tragic demise in 2012, she'd had a bad fall which had left her with walking difficulties. Her life was in chaos. She was an unemployed alcoholic, and her home was a mess. When examined, her flat was full of empty bottles, cigarette butts. And aside from every surface being littered with mouse droppings, 
mice had begun nestling inside the electrics of her 14-year-old fridge. In the weeks leading up to her death, Linda had begun to make contact with her younger sister who lived in Eastbourne, and having grown closer, they were talking about Linda moving to be nearer her sister so she could get the support that she needed. But all of this would come too late. On the 4th of May 2012, a few days before her 56th birthday, Linda had written a letter to her sister as they often did, and she'd left her a voicemail, nothing urgent, saying she just wanted to call for a chat. Having dozed off during the afternoon, it is believed that Linda had become aware of the smoke in her flat coming from her refrigerator and had got up to see to the fire. Suffering with chronic heart congestion and being intoxicated with alcohol, she had collapsed in front of the fridge and was overwhelmed by the fire. The fire brigade was called at 4.56pm and upon arrival, Linda was dead, with her body burnt beyond recognition. A Westminster coroner's court, a verdict of natural causes was ruled. And although it was determined that the flat was possibly caused by mice having eaten through the fridge's electrical wiring to make a nest, these rodents could not be charged with manslaughter. For her sister, although she had some comfort knowing that Linda was out of pain and torment, three details would prove distressing. The voicemail Linda had left was found a few hours later. The letters she had sent arrived two days after her death. And because of her injuries, her sister would state, The saddest part is because she suffered really bad burns. We weren't able to have an open casket at her funeral. And therefore, say a proper goodbye. Mice really do eat anything. So although they can be cute, it's worth remembering, they can also kill. The Daily Inch returns tomorrow. And of course, your regular episodes of Murder Mile return on Thursday the 3rd of November or three days earlier via Patreon. Thank you.